the cloud. There we go. Okay, can you see the shared screen? So can okay. I see the slides? Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, th thank you for having me here. And um, today I'm going to talk about uh, scrambling the branching. Uh, this talk is based on a previous paper uh, published last year, we, uh, written with Alexei Kitaev, and uh, also uh, some work in progress with Alexei Kitaev and Peng Fei Zhang, who we are all in Pasadena now. <laughs> so uh, here's the outline. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the goal today is trying to convince you there's a uh, interesting correct characteristic time in the process of information scrambling when we call it the branching time. Um, we have defined this, uh, we can define this in a quantum mechanical system with large number degree freedoms. Uh, but uh, just to, in order to give you a sense about, give a sense like what this time really about, I want to make an analogy between information scrambling and the viral spreading and use this classical model uh, to introduce this concept so that you can like have a sense, really have a sense about what this time scale is about. Uh, so that's, that's my plan. So I will first talk about this uh, analogy and uh, discuss this, uh, define this thing in the, in the classical model and then go to the proper quantum definition. Uh, with this uh, quantum definition, we can uh, actually compute this time scale, I mean, this quantity many body systems at uh, uh, like different temperatures and at, at different couplings. So we, uh, we just, uh, uh, I will just uh, present some example, uh, one in the weak coupling, one in the strong coupling. Uh, what's interesting is um, the, it turns out that the, 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 the idea of branching uh, will play a significantly different role in two scale, uh, two, two limits. So, uh, I mean, uh, I, will, I, will, I will show that in the weak coupling or in the infinite, uh, in high temperature, a uh, branch actually enhance the scrambling, but in the, in the strong coupling, in the, in the low temperature, uh, it, it will actually slow down. So at least in the example, we see this. So I want to explain there are two different mechanisms for scrambling from the viewpoint of a branch. And then that's also why we think a branch is an interesting concept. Um, after doing that, uh, since we have this new time scale, uh, characteristic time, I want to uh, say more about that. So I, I would like to show a upper bound on this branching time. And then that's, uh, that's the result is the uh, technical result uh, that, had, that was uh, mentioned here uh, is a work in progress with uh, uh, Alexei and uh, Peng Fei. Okay, uh, that's the outline. So let's get a start. Oh, uh, I see something. No. Okay. Uh, so uh, also I want to say, uh, I'm not very familiar with this uh, attendees system. So just uh, feel free to raise your hand and uh, uh, try to interrupt me at, at any time you want. So, okay. And uh, uh, Robbie and Angela and I will uh, keep an eye on all the attendees and uh, allow you to talk. Yeah, so for, feel free to interrupt. So let, let, let me uh, start with the uh, basic idea of scrambling. Um, over the past few years, we have gained a lot of understanding about uh, how, uh, what, what is chaos and the, the scrambling in the unitary quantum system. And uh, one very simple picture for that is that uh, the chaos and the scrambling uh, is really about how time evolution takes a simple operator to complicated ones. Uh, that's, uh, for example, in a spin model, we can have uh, a single spin and uh, on the evolution with the Hamiltonian, like uh, interacting spin, uh, it, the, uh, the time evolution will take uh, this single spin to a long like string of uh, spin operators. Uh, that's, that's, what's, uh, that's what the chaos is about. Uh, in this talk, I will mainly focus on a, uh, somehow a featureless or the simplest uh, interacting uh, fermionic model uh, we can actually think about, and that's this SYK model. So uh, this model, probably you have all familiar with that. Uh, today I will just use very uh, little information about that. Uh, it's, it's a random, randomly interacting uh, uh, fermionic model and uh, it's defined in zero plus one D. So although the indices here 
I will say, I will call them sites, but uh, there's no locality. So this, uh, this, all, uh, this number, large number of fermions will, uh, all live in the same uh, box and I just give them different label. So the Hamiltonian is simply, uh, you just randomly pick any four of them and uh, uh, couple them with a random, random number, J. Uh, in general, we can consider a family of SYK model. So uh, you can have, so here I write uh, four, four body infectings. Q equals four, I will, I will uh, let Q to denote the number of uh, fermion turns in, a, uh, in the Hamiltonian. Uh, in general, we can consider like a six body, eight body, and uh, uh, they will all have similar features. So uh, let's keep it general. So in a Q body interacting SYK model. Uh, uh, this model, uh, uh, so, so, the, so the coupling here is supposed to be random, so it's kind of featureless. And uh, to properly define the model, we need to uh, assign a probability distribution for this J. Uh, but those are all details. So we just keep, uh, remember those are random numbers. Uh, now with this Hamiltonian, uh, we can uh, try to understand uh, what's going on uh, when we take when, when, when we perform time evolution to a simple operator. So let's just pick one simple operator, chi j, it's a random one, and then let it evolve uh, uh, in time. So we just apply the Heisenberg equation. Uh, so when it evolves, Heisenberg equation tells us that uh, one simple operator can split into three, and it can split any, any time you want, and it can further split uh, uh, when time goes on. So here's a simple picture for a particular history for this process. Uh, one, simple, one simple operator splits into three. Uh, three because it has a four body interacting, so the vertex is, has four degree. So it splits to three and it can further split. So uh, after some time, we will see a uh, long operator. For example, in this history, it will become uh, nine Marana operators uh, at some time here. Okay, so that's uh, what scrambling is about. And uh, here uh, we just present a simple picture. Let's uh, try to quantify uh, like how fast the scrambling is. So the way to quantify that uh, we can introduce uh, a, a, a notion like called a size. So that's very intuitive. When one operator becomes three, become nine, and so the size grows. That's a very simple measure about uh, like how complicated an op operator is. Uh, as I said, uh, the, uh, one, the, the time evolution of uh, the time evolution will drive one simple operator to a bunch of uh, complicated operator, and uh, each uh, each one represent each tree represents a particular history, and uh, the the full uh, answer will uh, will be a superposition of all the histories, and each history. Or each, or each tree has a uh, probability amplitude here. And, and we want to uh, define the size that will be the average uh, size for this operator. That's, that's the probability, probability uh, like C squared times the size K. So, so size here, the one, two, three, like nine here. And in general, if you have a string with length S, I will, I will be, it will be S times the probability uh, uh, a distribution C square here. Okay, so that's the definition of size. That's very intuitive. And then all of these are, are only about this uh, time evolution uh, of this operator. And uh, we say nothing about the quantum state we are working on. Uh, to make the uh, statement I just said more uh, simple, I mean, to really write a formula for that, we will introduce this uh, anti commutator square. This anti commutator square uh, really counts how many operators uh, in, in, in the final uh, configuration for this, uh, for this tree. So if I have an operator that's belong to this tree, I will get a non-trivial anti-commutator and, and if I square and take a trace, I will just get a, a number like one. And uh, it counts how many uh, sites in a particular tree. Okay. So our sites will be defined as the trace of this anti commutator square, and they are familiar, and you probably have heard of this before, and they, uh, this, this, this is really the out of time order correlator. And uh, it's out of time order correlator defined in the infinite temperature because uh, we didn't insert any density matrix here. In other words, uh, all what we are talking about at this point uh, is, uh, is a property of the operator or the time evolution of this operator. There's nothing 
uh, there's no information uh, 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 about the states we are talking about. Okay, so in other words, uh, this kind of operator growth picture uh, provides a nice uh, picture for the information scrambling at at the infinite temperature. Okay. Uh, now with this. And you have probably already noticed the picture I drew. It can remind you some uh, simple picture about the virus spreading. So I will try to draw an analogy between this operator growth and the virus spreading, and use this uh, virus spreading to to define or to introduce this uh, character characters time called the branching time. And uh, actually, with uh, uh, with the model, simple model of virus spreading, I will introduce. I will derive a simple formula uh, relating uh, three different uh, characters time in the system. One, uh, one is so-called the Lyapunov time, which uh, describes how this, for example, in this case, describes how this size grows, uh, like how fast this size can grow. And uh, it can, well, in the quantum system, it can also be defined uh, using out of time the correlator. Uh, second is this new time scale I will introduce. The third time scale is uh, uh, probably most familiar with. That's the uh, coarse particle decay. So here is the decay rate. The decay time will be one over gamma, and I will define that uh, in a moment. I will explain that. Okay. And uh, this particular formula I will derive using this simple classical model, but it turns out to be exact for a special uh, family of SYK model, so called a Brownian SYK. Uh, where you don't have any uh, time correlation of the interactions. Okay. Uh, uh, is there any question about the plan uh, here or uh, the logic here? Okay. Now let me start with this classical model. Um, this model is very simple. Let's assume we have n people, and uh, uh, one of them is unhealthy, is infected by a certain virus, and uh, uh, let's call it patient zero. And at time t, uh, so we start at time t equals zero, and uh, uh, the, 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 the rule is uh, each patient will have probability gamma per unit time to infect uh, other people's. So it's kind of uh, this uh, gamma is, is, the, uh, pro, uh, is the probability that a particular infection event happens. Uh, and each time, so we, we, we mm, demand that each time when you uh, happen to spread, it always uh, infect Q minus two more people. So that means what well, uh, the certain combination here just trying to mimic the SYK model. So uh, for example, in this picture, we set Q equals four, and each time you will infect two more people. So one patient becomes three patients after a certain infection event. Uh, and as you know, this is the Boson process that, that says that like each per unit time you have same probability to infect others. And when we have a certain like history or like contact tracing, uh, you can define generation number or branches. So when this is this will be called generation zero, and this will be called generation one, and the, uh, the difference is uh, so in the middle there's a branch branch habits. Okay, so we have a branch number or generation number defined assigned to a particular history. Uh, to make the calculation simple, uh, I will make a, a few assumptions. Uh, first, let's consider large number of uh, people. So. Uh, in other words, I will, I, will, I, will, I will live in the dilute limit. Uh, so we, we assume uh, the number of people n is much bigger than one. Uh, and uh, we consider a so-called early time regime. Uh, that is, uh, so, so uh, we can define a so-called scrambling time in this, uh, in this, in this setting, uh, meaning the time scale when uh, all, all, almost every people get infected. So before that, uh, uh, way before that, we can use the dilute limit. So uh, in other words, uh, there won't be two uh, uh, patient to trying to infect the uh, uh, same person at, at some event. So that's, that's a simplifying assumption. The second assumption I will make is no one will die. 
And that means uh, whenever you get uh, infected, you will keep infecting others in the future. Uh, the third assumption is kind of uh, just uh, maybe not necessary, but uh, it helps uh, to simplify the calculation and to uh, simple, just is not necessarily uh, uh, so I, I my, my my expectation is you don't need a third assumption to uh, to uh, reach the conclusion but it's really nice to, uh, to have that uh, to simplify the calculation uh, the, the, uh, this means whenever you uh, infect others so now for example patient zero becomes uh, in fact now, now you have three patients and each each of them carry a virus so they can so this virus can decide to spread at any time they want. But uh, here we make an assumption that whenever one of them uh, happens to spread, uh, all of them should spread in the same time. So that's synchronized uh, infection. That's just a, a technical assumption. Um, okay, now uh, let's see with this simple model, what, what can we what can we say and uh, what, what are the interesting distance we can define? So the first uh, time scale is uh, so-called uh, Lyapunov time. That's, uh, so or in other words, so it's inverse, we will probably uh, we will often call the Lyapunov exponent. Let's describe how fast uh, this uh, virus spreads in, in, the, in, the, in the whole population, or in other words, how the infected, number of infected patients uh, grows with time. Uh, that's very easy to compute. So uh, each, uh, as we as we said, each infection will uh, increase number of infected per, uh, number of patients by q minus two, and uh, the probability of this happen is gamma, and uh, it also uh, should proportion to the uh, current patients. So that will be a simple formula uh, uh, determine the uh, growth rate, and uh, we will get uh, this number of growth exponential with, with, with time, and uh, the Lyapunov exponent will be q minus two times gamma. Uh, the second uh, characteristic time, uh, we will make we, we will draw an analogy to the so-called quasi-particle lifetime. So that's the that's the time that's the time scale that determines. Uh, how long you can hold yourself not infecting others. So, so by a Poisson process, uh, the probability of not in, uh, infecting others uh, will decay exponentially. And the decay rate is this gamma. And that's uh, similar, that's uh, analogous to the quasi-particle decay or quasi-particle lifetime in a, many, in a point condensed matter system. So the quasi-particle decay time will be one over gamma and the decay rate is called a gamma. Okay, those are the two uh, simple time scales we can imagine. But uh, today I'm going to introduce the third one. Uh, third, like interesting characteristic time. So what's that? Okay, so branching time. So from the name, you can probably guess what's that. So that's uh, uh, how, that, that describes how frequently uh, a, a branch happens. It's, it sounds like a tautology. It's like a, a, the definition of gamma. So if you really ask a patient zero, you stare at uh, him and uh, ask uh, how frequently you will infect others, uh, uh, then, then he will give a very simple answer. He say, okay, the, uh, after time t, the, 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 the infection event happens like uh, gamma times t just by definition. So uh, the branching time will simply be one over gamma. Uh, however, th uh, this is not true if you ask all the people. So if you, if you um, do a survey and uh, ask uh, all the current patients, like you can ask, uh, guess what's the, what's the generation number uh, of, of the virus in your body? And uh, let's uh, make a statistics. Uh, let's, 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 let's just uh, count how, uh, what's the average number of uh, generation of your virus in your body. Uh, if we do that calculation, we will get a different answer. Um, so that's uh, simply just demonstrate how to calculate it. It's very simple. Uh, we can, uh, so for this Poisson process, we can simply uh, get the probability distribution for this particular history. So a uh, history or a contact tracing history uh, with n infection events happen, uh, will have the probability Pn, that's the standard of Poisson distribution, gamma t to the power n, and with some exponential, that's a normalization factor. And uh, then uh, for each 
uh, this particular tree, uh, you will have Q minus one to the power N patients and uh, the generation number or the branching in their mind will be N. So we just uh, count N times the total uh, number with this N. To, uh, that's the Q minus one to the power N and with this probability and the uh, uh, average over all the infected people. Uh, so we get a different number. We will get Q minus one times gamma times T. So we will get a different, I mean, this is naive branching time. This will be the actual branching time we, 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 we get. So the branching rate will be Q minus one times gamma. So the reason for this discrepancy is that um, uh, if you stare at uh, individual trees, you do get the, uh, this, probit, uh, this number, the, the naive answer, uh, but each tree have different weight because uh, if a tree have a large number of uh, uh, branches, it means it will infect more people. So uh, when you do the statistics or do the survey, there will be more people on giving the, this answer other than a uh, tree with smaller branches. So there will be a shift on the weight and this shift actually increase the branching rate. Uh, so increase by a factor Q minus one. Okay, so that's the idea here. Uh, so the branching time is something related to the gamma, but multiplied by Q minus one. So we have three uh, characters time in this simple model. So one is the scrambling time, sorry, scrambling rate. Second is the uh, branching rate. So all the, uh, sorry, the naive branching rate or the quasi particle decay rate. The third is the, the actual branching rate, it's Q minus one times gamma. So we get a simple relation. So Q is just some uh, parameter uh, describing the details of interaction in your system. If we don't know the, uh, this concept branching rate or branching time, we will conclude that uh, they are related by this uh, kind of non-universal detail. But if we have this branching rate and this concept, we will get an interesting relation between them. So the scrambling rate will be the branching rate minus the quasi particle decay rate. Or you can say this rate is uh, the rate, uh, the rate of being healthy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, being responsible, <laughs> not healthy, you already get infected. Uh, so from this simple relation, I mean, this really simple relation, you, 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 will, you will get an intuition. I mean, uh, it, it, this intuition works for this virus spreading model and it also works for uh, its analogy in the Operators, operator grows the, the infant temperature. Uh, the, the picture is really the same as virus spreading. This intuition is that uh, the branching is the driving force of scrambling. So it's branching with a plus sign minus the other things to get corrected. Okay, so that's the lesson we learned here. Uh, I want to say that this virus spreading model, as we introduced. It is uh, analogous to the SYK, uh, but with, uh, with, with the original SYK we introduced here, uh, but with one uh, difference. Uh, this difference is that uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, boson process, each uh, infection event is uncorrelated. So there's no relation between this event and that event, but in the actual uh, SYK Hamiltonian, uh, if you want to calculate uh, this, uh, the, the different infection event at a different time is have a statistical relation due to the definition of the coupling constant because we require coupling constant uh, to have a natural uh, correlation whenever they have same indices. So that's, that will cause a, a small difference between these two uh, model, but uh, there's a way to erase that difference, that so-called uh, uh, Brownian SYK, that is literally trying to erase all the statistical correlation between, uh, sorry, all the uh, correlation in time between two uh, in interaction vertex. So the uh, Brownian SYK is defined as, uh, it is not a time independent, it's, it's a time, time dependent Hamiltonian, the, the coupling depends on time, and it depends on time in a very simple way. We require that two coupling constants at different time, uh, is a data function in time. So that's the, really the Brownian motion about. What's the Brownian motion is about? 
if you do that to erase this uh, uh, final difference, uh, you will find that these two, uh, these two systems, uh, the, the, the quantum system with the Hamiltonian and this simple classical virus spreading model uh, will give the same result uh, in the sense that uh, uh, it will give the same relation between these three uh, time scale time time uh, time scales. So uh, the coupling here will determine the so-called cost particle decay rate in the in the Brownian SYK. And uh, if you compute the after the exponent for the Brownian SYK, you will get the exact relation. Uh, you have the same relation q minus two times gamma and the branching rate. You can you can compute and get q minus one times gamma. I will I will introduce the uh, uh, the quantum definition branching rate and uh, uh, which allow you to compute this. Uh, so these two models are really uh, related to each other. But uh, for using this classical uh, virus spreading model, you can really get a sense about, uh, of, of what this uh, branching time is about. Okay, uh, but I want to also put, uh, put a warning here. Um, this introduce, uh, this, this intu intuition, like this analogy between Operator growth tree and the, the viral spreading uh, re really good at high temperature because, as we said, uh, the, the formula relating size and uh, all these things relating OTO state to this concept about uh, size uh, is is identified. These two things identified at infinite temperature, uh, so we expect it will be good at uh, slightly maybe high temperature, but we cannot push the intuition too far to low temperatures. So uh, in, the, because, uh, in, the, in the low temperature, when we have this, uh, uh, this complicated uh, history of this operator, we get some uh, string of uh, operators. And uh, when we have a uh, low energy space or the ground st or the sort of states, you need to understand how this, uh, uh, how the, what's the expectation value of this, uh, huge strain on, on, on those states. That will give additional uh, information and uh, that might uh, change the interpretation here. Okay. Uh, is there any uh, question about this virus spreading model? Uh, if no one else has a question, I have, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess what, um, I'm just trying to gain a little bit of intuition on this, uh, uncorrelated in time operator with relative to the model? Is that just, I mean, is that basically saying that these branching events can happen at any time? Um, uh, uh, are you asking about this like a uh, difference between Brownian or SYK and the actual SYK, something? Or? Uh, I guess be between kind of the Brownian and, and this uh, classical model. Um, that you were describing. So, so here you have kind of time progressions, and yes. and now you're introducing uh, these branchings can kind of happen whenever. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, in the classical model, like there's no constraint or relation between any two vertices. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a Brownian motion. Uh, it, it, in the actual like uh, quantum model with time transition symmetry, there will be some uh, relation correlation between a vertex at time zero and the vertex at time uh, much later. So there will be statistical correlation. So there's there's a constraint. Uh, so in that sense, uh, this Brownian is more close to the classical model. Uh, okay. Is this the question you asked? Maybe I misunderstood the point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that answers it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I spent a lot of time trying to explain the idea about this branching time. Now let's go to the actual quantum definition, the proper definition of quantum system, uh, and the, it will work for any temperature. Um, so uh, we would like to de define this branching time for a quantum system with large temperature freedom. And then we are interested in uh, uh, class models uh, with some particular uh, diagrammatic structure. And those, uh, those models all have the feature that the out of time correlation function or actually a generic four point function uh, will, uh, will be given by a sum of ladder diagrams. Uh, this is a bit technical, but the idea is uh, when you compute the OTOC, you find you insert the four operators and uh, you find that the leading diagrams is 
uh, look like this. So uh, diagram with zero rungs with one rungs and going and going on. And uh, when you have this such kind of diagrammatic structure, uh, you can define a simple concept that's the uh, average time separation between two between two rungs. And uh, uh, when you have this uh, Feynman diagrams, uh, the Feynman diagrams itself can uh, provide a, a, a candidate for the probability distribution. So that's the idea. Mm. And uh, it's not much uh, different from the previous uh, concept that we, uh, we, use, we introduce the, uh, using the trees. The, in the trees, we say that branching, branching tie is the average distance between two uh, vertices or the, uh, describe how frequently this tree branches. Uh, and here we use ladder diagrams. Uh, they are actually the same. If you cut in the middle and uh, trying to pull them out, so each of them will be a tree. And uh, in other words, you can glue the trees uh, with, by, the, by gluing the leaves, and you will get back to the uh, ladders. And the uh, 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 previous definition in the infant temperature, yeah, it just give a one, one particular candidate, uh, one particular choice of the probability distribution assignment for the for the trees. But here we use Feynman diagram to to do the job. So uh, we can see the ladder diagrams actually just provides a suitable inner product for the trees. So that's a simple picture. So you can imagine that the definition here will have similar uh, uh, meaning as we used to define branching tie in the classical model. Uh, uh, so that we, we, we provide a, a definition and we want to uh, really work out some formula to, to help you to calculate this time scale. Uh, similar to the previous virus spreading model, we, we, will, we will first count the average number of rungs and then use the total time to divide that, to uh, let it divide by the number of rungs to, to define this branching time. Uh, so diagrammatically, how to compute this average number of rungs uh, is simply uh, by definition, you just uh, single out all each diagrams, assign uh, the number n here and divided by the uh, uh, total amplitude, LTOC. And uh, this calculation uh, can be done using a, a simple uh, trick. Uh, whenever we want to compute the expectation value of n, we can first introduce some uh, fugacity or chemical potential for that uh, particular number and uh, uh, define a kind of uh, grand canonical version of the, of the quantity, the OTOC at some chemical potential mu. And we, since it's still some, uh, a ladder diagram and we expect it still grows exponentially with, with time, with uh, the upper exponent that depends on the chemical potential we introduce. And, uh, then the uh, uh, an average number of branches will be the logarithmic derivative of that quantity. So it will be proportional to time and uh, uh, the, the coefficient will be called the branching rate. And that's simply the Lyapunov exponent as a, uh, the derivative of Lyapunov exponent at the uh, chemical potential equals zero, the original case. So we really relate the branching rate and uh, the branching time uh, and the Lyapunov exponent in a simple formula. Furthermore, that uh, all these quantities, so in particular, this Lyapunov exponent as a function of mu can be obtained using a standard method called a, a kinetic equation or the retarded kernel method. Uh, let me spend like one or two minutes of, uh, uh, explaining the technical uh, procedure like the recipe to compute all these things. The retarded kernel method uh, is using the fact that out of time of the correlation, diagrammatically, you can write down a uh, approximate equation for this quantity. It will be, if you look at its structure, uh, it will remind you something about the uh, Schrodinger Dyson equation, and uh, uh, you can use that the same idea to write, write down an uh, equation for the OTFC. It will be if you add additional, run, additional uh, kernel to that, it will be itself uh, plus this thing. Uh, and since this thing is not growing, uh, you would expect the, uh, you would expect a approximate equation that out of time the correlation function is approximately an eigenvector of this kernel with eigenvalue one. So now all the questions 
uh, becomes just trying to search an uh, eigenvalue eigenvector of this particular operator, which can, which can be constructed by uh, the two-point functions in your system, um, uh, with a, and, and you search the eigenvector with eigenvalue one. That will finish the job. And indeed, you can do that. Uh, you can further simplify the problem by using the symmetries of this uh, kernel. That's the global time translation symmetry. And uh, you can define center mass time uh, for the uh, first two arguments and, and, the, and the last two arguments, and then you uh, define a quantum number assign, uh, assigned to that time. That's the, the that's, it turns out to be the Lyapunov exponent. When you have that, uh, you can diagonalize this operator, and the further the further the eigenvalue will be a function. The eigenvalue of this operator, uh, we denote as k, will be a function of this quantum number. It will be k of lambda. So the, the so the final problem we need to solve is to is is trying to solve the equation k equals one and finally up an exponent. Uh, this procedure I described for the case with mu equals zero, but it also works when uh, mu is now zero. So with fugacity, you or with chemical potential, you will get a slightly generalized equation. So this is a standard uh, recipe to compute all these things. And you, uh, using this formula, we will get uh, branching time uh, is actually related to this particular function. Uh, it will be the derivative of this particular function at the actually apparent exponent. Okay, so here I just want to show that you do have a standard procedure to compute all these things in a quantum many body system with large number degree freedom. Okay, and now you, uh, to have the standard recipe, we can uh, apply this to various systems. As we said, in, uh, in this various spreading model, and also it works for the Brownian SYK, uh, we found an interesting relation between these three quantities, the Lyapunov exponent, branching rate, and the quasi particle decay rate. Now we can test whether this question will hold for general systems. Uh, at a, at a general temperature. So this is at infinite temperature. Now let's uh, compute that. Uh, uh, we, we first found that if a system has a, a coarse particle uh, structure, is a, if the retarded Green's function has a coarse particle pole, that's the definition of having a coarse particle. Uh, uh, we, under some approximation, which I don't have time to explain, and there's, uh, there's a, a, a assumption on the, how the interaction should decay in time. Uh, if we, uh, on the data uh, approximation or assumption, the Lyapunov exponent will be approximately given by the uh, uh, branching rate minus the quasi particle decay rate. And this uh, uh, approximate will be, become exact uh, in the limit of Brown, in, in, in the Brownian SYK, where the uh, interaction actually has no uh, correlation uh, at a different time. That's, that's uh, one conclusion. So this uh, basic intuition also works in a in system with quasi particle or in some sense it's a weakly coupled system. Uh, however, if you push to a very low temperature or to the, to the system with strong coupling, uh, here I try to uh, identify the temperature in the coupling because uh, the actual uh, dimensionless quantity in this model will be inverse temperature times coupling constant. So, uh, Either one of them become bigger will, uh, will be the same. Uh, we, uh, we, we can perform the calculation for, uh, in the SYK model at a very low temperature. And we found a, a, a so, uh, kind of famous result that SYK is almost, um, almost, almost maximal chaos. So it, uh, the, leading the big part for the Lyapunov exponent will be given by two pi times temperature. That's the um, upper bound uh, proved, uh, proposed by Stanford Shanker and, and Malacena. Uh, but uh, when you have, so, so the actual model will be, will be something, so this is the upper bound, but the actual, uh, actual answer will be a small correction to this upper bound. It will be a positive coefficient alpha, uh, which is uh, which is rely on the details of the UV. So it's not a universal, but it's all the one number. And, uh, is inverse proportion to uh, J, this coupling constant, times the branching time. So, uh, so branching time actually determines the correction to, to the maximal chaos. 
And in this model, we can, uh, we can compute the branching tide will be uh, just one over three pi times temperature. Okay, uh, so in low temperature, in low temperature, this formula doesn't hold. And actually we see a, a, a quite a significant difference. The difference is, is, is in the sign. Uh, in, the, in the low temperature, we see that uh, branching is the driving force for the scrambling. So it's, a, it, it's actually a plus sign. So the Lyapunov exponent is branching rate minus something. So branching actually enhances the scrambling. Uh, but in the low temperature, uh, we see that branching comes with a minus sign. So the branching rate actually slow, branching rate actually uh, make, make the upper exponent smaller. So it's actually slow down the, 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 the scrambling. So that's quite different. And uh, uh, this kind of indicates that there, there exists two different mechanisms uh, for branching in the high temperature and the low temperature, sorry, for scrambling at the low, uh, in the high temperature and the low temperature. Uh, but, but we can actually uh, draw an analogy to some, to some daily life experience. Uh, you just imagine the most simple uh, scrambling, like scrambling egg or, scr or mixing honey in the water. Uh, you can have two ways to, to do the job. First is just, just wait, just put the hot water and honey together and uh, wait, and the, the dissipation will help you. That's similar to the, uh, to the high temperature picture here. Uh, you just let uh, things spread, uh, let it dissipate, they will, they will branch out and, uh, and, and form some, uh, some combination between the water molecule and the honey molecule, maybe something like that. So that's the, that's the first uh, mechanism. Uh, but there's another mechanism whenever you have some, uh, you have a, like a tool, like a spoon, you can just stir it and that's correspond to uh, a geometric deformation. Well, just make it a more formal, it's just like diff geometric deformation. And indeed, in the low temperature calculation of SYK, the, the driving part, two pi times temperature, the, the almost maximal part, uh, can, can, can be interpreted as a uh, so-called shock curve calculation in the back, on, on, the back, on the black hole background. So that's very close to the geometric deformation. And the, the uh, other part coming from uh, uh, other fields in SYK, uh, they will actually slow down the scrambling. So the branching will play the opposite role as in the, in the high, high temperature. It will slow down the thing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the point I want to make. There, there exist two significantly different mechanisms in, in, in the scrambling. Okay, uh, I probably use up my time. Huh? Did I? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, let me, let me, okay, yeah, there's a question, I see. Who is, ah, Kevin. Hello. Oh, cool. Um, so in the spoon analogy, what does yeah. this branching time correspond to? Uh, I, I, I would say this branching time corresponds to the, I mean, let me say branch rate. Branch rate uh, corresponds to the uh, rate that uh, uh, honey molecule uh, and the water molecule uh, uh, combine and uh, mix, something like that. Just some uh, microscopic process. Uh, to dis okay, maybe I would say it's a dissipation rate. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, it may be uh, strange that uh, when you have a spoon, why dissipation will slow down. But uh, that's kind of, uh, uh, the only logical uh, thing can have a uh, given the maximal chaos. So you have some uh, particular spoon, uh, but the spoon cannot stir as fast as you want. It, it has a maximal, uh, maximal velocity and uh, somehow the uh, uh, process of dissipation will slow down that velocity. Uh, this is kind of not process, just to provide some uh, daily life and energy. <laughs> not supposed to be very precise. <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, there's another question in the, in the QA session. How is scrambling uh, related to entanglement? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I think, uh, uh, oh. Oh, I, I just changed it to it's being answered. Oh, I see, okay. Um, um, I think from the picture of 
operator spreading. Uh, you can see these two phenomena are related to each other. Um, when the uh, kind of a scrambling enhanced the entanglement between different parts. So if an operator uh, grows and uh, become complicated operator and covers some bigger region, and whenever then then the entanglement between these two uh, the, the, the two sub region and this bigger region uh, uh, will be enhanced. That's my basic intuition. And uh, there are some precise uh, relation uh, between OTOC and the second linear entropy. Uh, yeah, there's some relation uh, written in the literature. That's uh, some formula you can look up. Mm -hmm. uh, any other question? Okay. Okay, I didn't see any question. Okay. Oh, uh, let me go to the last. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you can finish uh, or just. If yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I think we have we have a few extra minutes, so you're, you're yeah, good. I will finish in two slides. Uh, so here uh, we have seen that uh, uh, branching uh, slow down the scrambly in the in the low temperature limit. So if you are looking for a maximal chaos, you would uh, you would ask, can I parametrically increase the branching time so that uh, the system uh, is arbitrarily close to a system with maximal chaos? Uh, there are uh, several reasons to search for such uh, such system, but uh, one particular interesting reason is we expect a system with a, a gravity distribution description have maximal chaos. So if a system is very have a very long branching time, we will expect this uh, well described by the gravity. And SYK already shows some uh, good signature, but uh, unfortunately the branching time is not long enough. Um, and in, in fact. Uh, uh, we, sh uh, we prove some kind of no-go theory for SYK-like model. It turns out there is an upper bound for such kind of simple model. The branching time times the Lyapunov time uh, is bounded by, by two. You cannot reach arbitrary long branching time uh, within the framework. Uh, so it will, uh, will be applicable for SYK-like model, but with uh, certain uh, constraints. So you can generalize this model to high dimensions, multiple flavors, but uh, uh, our Bound only applies to fermionic model, and uh, there are some technical condition on how the interaction vertex can be constructed. Uh, but I won't have time to dis describe it as a single condition. If you are interested, you can ask me after talk. Uh, so you can you can uh, from one way you can say this is kind of no-go theory to find a quantum system like in, within this framework um, uh, close to gravity, very uh, very close to gravity. But you can also say this provides a guide to search for such kind of system. You, you can try to avoid all the conditions we lay out and construct a model, and probably you can find a good candidate for a holographic model. Yeah, that's uh, the meaning of this. That's the point of this bound. Okay, that's my summary. So today I uh, start with some analogy between the scrambling at infinite temperature, or I use operator growth picture to describe this particular, uh, describe this concept. Uh, we make an analogy between this operator growth to the virus spreading and I use this classical model. Actually, I spend a lot of time explaining this in this virus spreading model to, uh, to, to motivate the, uh, this time scale called branching time. And uh, then I uh, give a proper definition of this branching time in quantum model. Uh, and uh, provide a recipe uh, for calculating that. And uh, it, it turns out you only need to know two point function and then you can get everything. Uh, and uh, I report uh, two significantly different results in low temperature and high temperature. And uh, this difference seems to imply there are two different mechanisms. And uh, in the end, I mentioned upper bound on branching time. Uh, I didn't mention this, but uh, if you uh, assume a quasi particle decay rate, uh, a system you can, uh, have a quasi particle uh, definition, then you can slightly improve this bound uh, by a little shift. So this bound is Tb smaller than two over lambda, but uh, when you have a gamma, when you, decay, when you have a positive decay rate, the you know, decay rate is always positive, uh, you can slightly uh, uh, improve this bound. So it will be two over lambda L plus gamma. And uh, uh, I 
uh, report that uh, for a weakly coupled system, uh, if you compare it, you will find that the upper exponent is uh, uh, approximately given by the branching rate minus gamma, and it, this relation uh, becomes exact in the Brownian model, Brownian SYK model, which, also, which is corresponds to the virus spreading. Okay, uh, that's all I have. Thank you for, the, for listening, and uh, uh, please ask questions as much as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, wish we had a, a nice applause sound here. <laughs> um, are there any questions from anyone? Any final questions? Uh, while we're waiting, oh, oh yeah, never mind. There, there's a hand yeah. raised from Kevin. Kevin, yes. Hi again. Um, Hi, yeah. I forget if you said, is there a way to? Do you know how to modify the Hamiltonian to increase the branching time or change it? Uh, uh, so, uh, can, can I say the question again? I uh, so do you know how you have to modify the Hamiltonian in order to change mm -hmm. the branching time to make it bigger or smaller? Oh uh, yeah, we, we, we have some intuition how to go around. We know how to go around this uh, technical assumptions uh, so that we don't have to follow this bound. Uh, for example, uh, we can make, so in SYK, the interaction happens at a certain vertex and uh, uh, it's kind of full form interaction. But uh, if we introduce some kind of matrix uh, model version of interaction, we have two fermions coupled to a bosonic field with two indices and the diagram will be more complicated. Uh, there won't be a, like a single line connecting up and down. There will be some kind of planar diagram field to get a field in the middle. Then that kind of system doesn't follow this uh, uh, this assumption. Uh, sorry, this, this bound, and uh, uh, we can possibly uh, trying to start there and try to find a model with longer branching time. Uh, but the calculation is more challenging, so we didn't uh, we haven't got any uh, explicit answer yet. I see. So, yeah, we we need, we need to try. Uh, we, we we don't have a like. A, I mean, we don't have a definite intuition on like how to increase that. It's kind of- What, a, if, uh, or what if you had two body terms, then what happens to these times? Oh, uh, it won't because you mean, uh, if I have a, like a, something like a mass term? Yeah. Uh, it, it won't uh, because first, uh, when you add a mass term or I, when you have a chance of this, this kind, of this kind, and they all follow the same rule. So they will, they will still satisfy the upper bound we prove. Uh, uh, but, uh, and, and, and it turns out in SYK by a simple dimension counting, uh, only the, the smallest Q will do dominate the low temperature limit. So when you add a mass turn, it will be dominated by the mass turn and the system is more close to a Fermi liquid in the sense that there are coarser particles. And uh, mm, that, uh, Okay, uh, thank you for the pointing this out, but uh, uh, I want to just point that if you, if you increase Q to infinity, you can slightly uh, increase the branching time, but it's still an uh, order one improvement. It's still satisfied the uh, upper bound. Uh, it do increase by some factor of maybe two, but still satisfies this bound. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a... Uh, Chat. Great. Oh. Um, okay, if there are no more questions, um, feel free to join us also in, in the gather town. I've posted to I posted a link to the chat here. Uh, it's it's a little interface where you can kind of walk around and talk to people. So you can talk to Ying Fei or or other people that are here. And so mm -hmm. feel free to, to join us here just for, for informal discussion for asking questions or for anything. And, and thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Yingfei. Yeah, I'll try to join this. I haven't tried this.